Okay, today I'm sharing with you a little contraption I built. This is for the Wingsland Scarlet Mini Vet. You might have noticed in a previous video, you put your hand on top of this uh, battery charger. It's almost too hot to touch, and that's where they save money. You know, this is a $300 drone, not the $1,000. The uh, superchargers, I'm going to go ahead and call them. If this is a regular charger, the superchargers is the one that can charge multiple batteries at a time and do it in less time. And if you look those up, you'll see that those actually have one of these little tiny fans in the back uh, to keep them cool. You know, heat's a byproduct of you know energy distribution. An unwanted byproduct is what ruins most things. So, this thing was almost too hot to hold your hand on and sit there. And I know from working on computers that when laptop adapter cords are that hot, they're like a few days from dying. So, this one has no fan, but it has little tiny grills on both sides to allow air through. So, what I did is put a fan on either side of it, and of course, the direction is blowing from front to back, so it takes a breeze right through this thing, and man, it's like no temperature. And without it, it's like 110 degrees, no lie. Um, so this is a vast improvement and hopefully it will prolong the life. And also, it, when they get hot, the overcurrent protection could get compromised. Uh, this battery says it's 11.1 .1 volts. Now, the first time I charged this and I went out there to fly, it was telling me I had 12.3. Now maybe that's normal, maybe this little cheap um, adapter doesn't really have overcurrent protection. I didn't really know when the battery was full and just kept on going. Something to keep an eye on. Anyway, this was made from junk I have here in my shop. It didn't cost anything. And here's your basic components. These you can find almost anywhere, and I bet you got about 10 of them in your house somewhere. Uh, they can be from answering machines, old cordless phones. Basically, you just read the label on it. If it says 12 volts, you grab one of these. I work on computers, so obviously I have a bunch of these. But these are the standard things that like come on old computer motherboards, sometimes in the back. It'll also come on equipment like that. So basically you can get these fans anywhere. I mean, find somebody throwing away a computer, it's probably got a couple inside. And all you do is look at the label, and it'll say 12 volts. You just yank that off and separate the red and black. I don't know if that's going to show up. Let's see. Anyway, you just yank that off. Ah, it's a good thing I'm not a surgeon, huh? Hack a string. You just cut that off. Split these. Actually, I didn't pay attention to see if this is even 12 volts. Not that I care. Worst thing that's going to happen. It won't work. And then, usually, it won't matter if it's just two wires, which two. Some of the fans have three wires. One's just a control wire to slow the voltage down, like this one. And usually the red and black will be positive and negative, and then this white one is usually just the control wire. You can just trim it, you don't need it. It's just so when the motherboard tells the fan, hey, we're not working that hard, we can lower the RPMs. It does, by cutting the voltage. So without it, it just runs full speed. Uh, let's see if this can work. See that? Little spinner. And that's just made from junk laying around your house, thrift store, neighbor's trash can, whatever. And I think this, uh, I think that adapter I just cut off was only 9 volts. And this is a 12 volt fan, so it'll still work. It's just getting the least bit of pressure. And then all I did was take JB Weld. You RC guys and everything. I see everybody using hot glue guns to do little modifications, and that's cool. It's easily removable. I got a construction background. We don't really use, use plastics, so this shit works great. It's perfect. It will actually seal a motor, a hole in your motor. So you mix two of these equally and slap a little down here, and then you just hold them in place. 
and you can see they are permanent. But anyway, that's the little no dollar uh, charger cooler to hopefully prolong life. And man, that is just so perfect. That works really good. Oh yeah, and on these little tiny fans, usually the label side that tells you the voltage and amps is usually the way the fan's going to be blowing the air out. So right now, these are both blowing straight through like a window in your house, and it's keeping it really cool. Obviously, this is not going to be any good to take to the park with you or whatnot, but you could fabricate one with a battery pack you know, just as easy. These little fan system, they use like 0.14 amps. So it's really minimum. So you could probably use a lipo battery or something, and, and so you could take that into the field and have it. I was working on mine. I've got some gimbal problems. I get up there flying and it's straight, but then a big wind comes along and my gimbal goes to the side a little bit. I haven't figured out how to fix that problem yet. But anyway, that was my little low, no cost uh, build for a cooler for your little charger, and it would work with other ones also. But I did notice that the big uh, chargers actually come with a fan in them. And this is just one of the ways they save money to give you a drone for 300 bucks with so many functions. Three axis gimbal, GPS return to home, same flight time as a Phantom, roughly 20 minutes. So there's a few places where you can spot how they save money to deliver you such a, an inclusive product for, for the money. So trying to make my stuff last and make some little improvements where I can but this would be good for anything like I said heat's always the death of uh, computer parts so if you can drop the heat down you'll definitely increase the longevity of that device alright after I charge I'm gonna go fly talk to you later